Charles, Arby Trail, 290. It's traffic. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. Your official Chicagoland weather forecast from the One Hour Heating and Air Conditioning Weather Center. Clouding up this morning and then showers uh, throughout the day. High 62. Cloudy, breezy, 40 overnight. 44 at O'Hare. Next news coming up at 8. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Watch today's show live right now on the Income Store live video stream at 560theanswer.com. Don't miss Sean Hannity, Michelle Malkin, and Laura Logan at Freedom Summit 2019. Get your tickets today at freedomsummitchicago.com. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, the courtship of Hunter's father season finale this morning. Hunter sits down with ABC News and gives himself a clean bill of health. Joe comes in and says, "Let me tell you about my, my best, best friend. He's one boy, boy cuddly toy, my, my up, my down, my pride, pride my joy." And uh, here's him giving himself a clean bill of health. Maybe, perhaps, who knows? Maybe the judgment could have been better, but certainly, obviously, no wrongdoing, much less illegality. No, in, in retrospect, look, I, I, I think that it was poor judgment on my part, is that I think that it was poor judgment because I don't believe now, when I look back on it, I know that there was no, did nothing wrong at all. However, was it poor judgment to be in the middle of something that is a, it, it's a, it's a swamp in, in, in many ways? Yeah. And so I take, I take, um, full responsibility for that. Do I, did I do anything improper? No, in, not in any way, not in any way whatsoever. I joined a board, I served honorably, I did, I focused on corporate governance. I didn't have any discussions with my father before or after I joined the board as it related to it, other than that brief exchange that we had. Yeah, and the brief exchange that he had with his dad, his dad said, are you sure you can handle this? Are you ready for this? Yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 this, who's buying this bullshit? It's a full stop here. I served honorably on the board of Burisma. That's like Tom Hagen saying, I served honorably as corp counselor for the Corleone family. Uh, this op-ed uh, by a Ukrainian member of parliament, former head of the country's security service in the Wall Street Journal this week. Uh, first, as I've insisted for more than two years, we must resolve the allegation that Ukrainian officials interfered in the 2016 presidential election. If we find that Ukrainian laws were broken, the perpetrators here must be prosecuted swiftly to the fullest extent of the law. Second, Ukraine must resolve the allegations regarding Burisma. As the former head of the security service of Ukraine, our version of the U.S. FBI, I know there are many accusations against this company. This uh, gentleman, known apparently in Ukraine to be a bit of an outspoken anti-corruption type. So... Uh, it's just important to note this because Hunter says the same thing that his handmaidens in the D.C. press corps have been saying, that any suggestion that there was anything improper, much less criminal, has been completely debunked. Well, um, you have a former head of Ukrainian security service, their FBI, and now a member of parliament saying it has been neither debunked nor bunked because it hasn't been investigated. And, and I'm sure all of the goo inside the Beltway would, of course, welcome any anti-corruption investigation in any country for the betterment of that country and our relationship with that country, right? We don't want to be dealing with corrupt countries, so we have to limit the corruption here, have others limit their corruption there. So why not have Ukraine take a look-see if they want to take a look-see? They're a sovereign nation. They can do what they want. But it's interesting to note that this is what one legislator and former, again, head of Ukrainian's version of the FBI has to say on the topic, it doesn't really square with what we're hearing from the press corps here, does it now? Mm. Huh. And what about in regards to China? This is what he said to Amy Rohrbacher. I, have you received any money from no. on business dealing? No. At all? Not no. one cent? Not one cent. Definitely not $1.5 billion. It's crazy. They feel like they have the license to go out and say whatever they want. It feels to me like living in um, some kind of Alice in Wonderland where... You're up on the real world, and then you fall down the rabbit hole, and, you know, the president's a Cheshire cat asking you questions yeah, about we, we crazy get the things that, that don't have very, any resemblance to the reality of, of uh, anything that has to do with me. 
And so, <laughs> here's, here's the answer. No one ever paid me $1.5 billion. Uh, and <laughs> if they had, yeah. um, I, I would not be doing this interview. Oh, <laughs> oh, so, 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 we're having go. fun. Here's the thing. Uh, Rosemont Seneca currently manages the equivalent of $2.1 billion in assets, according to its website. $1.5 billion was received by a Chinese state bank. So, no, nobody's saying that it was paid directly to Hunter Biden. What we're saying is his firm got a one and a half billion dollar cash infusion from a Chinese state bank, uh, has two billion dollars in assets under management. And Hunter Biden has a 10 percent stake in the firm, which is why when Hunter Biden said in that interview, I promised if my dad's elected that I won't have any direct business dealings in foreign lands. He was it's important that you pick up on the word direct because indirect means, well, I'll still keep my passive 10% stake in Rosemont Seneca, $2 billion under management. So he may, may not be getting paid now, but he will in the future. For more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by Mark Loader, who is the director of strategic communications for president Trump's 2020 reelection campaign, former special assistant uh, to the president and press secretary to vice president Pence. Mark, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, so you uh, satisfied that uh, there's nothing to see here and we can all move on with respect to Hunter and the Biden? <laughs> <laughs> no, not even a little. Uh, I mean, look, this is a very this is very simple. Even if it was not against the law for Burisma to hire Hunter Biden under Ukrainian law, federal regulations say that a, that a federal government official cannot have a basically a decision making stake and take a lead in issues where your family members are directly benefiting and so you do clearly have the ethical questions that should be asked of the former vice president about his actions while he was vice president not only in ukraine but also uh, with china because as we know he went over to uh, china on air force two with his son they met uh, leaders in this company, and weeks later, they get this $1.5 billion cash infusion. Those are very legitimate questions to be asked. They are not about 2020. They are about the official actions of the then vice president of the United States and whether there were ethical concerns and whether that met the ethical standards we expect of our federal office holders. Well, doesn't, doesn't a hunter stepping down from Rosemont Seneca – and Joe Biden making this big proclamation in Iowa this week that uh, Hunter won't uh, be engaged in any high-flying foreign business dealings if I'm the president. I mean, isn't basically that a, con a concession at minimum that they had a conflict of interest, that Joe Biden had a conflict of interest, and that at minimum the whole thing smells bad? No, absolutely. I mean, if, it, if, it was, if it's going to be wrong in a potential and not likely Joe Biden administration, then why wasn't it wrong when he was right. the vice president yeah. of the United States to be doing the exact same thing? I mean, this entire this entire little PR stunt over the last few days has been a, we didn't do anything wrong, but we're not going to do it again. Right. I mean, it's just an admission of guilt in my mind. Test. Well, what about Hunter's lack of relevant experience for those jobs? I mean, that's clearly something we've got. It's got to be taken a look at. I mean, he, he has no interest uh, background in Ukraine, no background in natural gas, no background in corporate governance. Yet he was paid five hundred or fifty thousand dollars a month uh, over the course of like five years. Right. Fifty thousand dollars a month. He just left that position uh, earlier April. this year. Yeah. He's pers um, he's pursuing so other he opportunities. At this point. He wants a and higher paying job. The, right. And then you wonder why the Chinese bank, the, the Chinese government. Uh, invested 1.5 billion dollars into his into his uh, you know his investment firm. Now to be fair to Hunter in that ABC interview, he did say probably he wouldn't have got those deals if his last name wasn't Biden. But I mean, who can wow. really say? You know, I mean, it's such an imponderable. Yeah, you know, he hit it right there on the head. There was it, it's Biden Inc. <laughs> Uh, I want to get your take, too. You wrote a piece uh, for RealClearPolitics.com because one of the other arguments that was being asserted as sort of a, a misdirection by members of the uh, esteemed D.C. press corps is that, well, uh, you have uh, Ivanka uh, circumnavigating the globe, making all kinds of money with her clothing lines and whatnot. So what's the difference between Ivanka and Donald and Hunter and Joe? 
Well, I think that, I mean, two things are very important here. One, Ivanka Trump was a successful, internationally renowned businesswoman before she entered or her father entered politics. And and we have no we have no income, you know, indication that Hunter Biden was anything other than Joe Biden's son. And he was profiting basically off of that. But Ivanka Trump, the entire Trump family, ran a successful business enterprise before uh, Donald Trump even came down that escalator to announce his candidacy, let alone win. And and Ivanka has 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 closed down that operation. And I know a lot of people are talking about Chinese trademarks. And one thing that I found really interesting that was in within weeks of the president being inaugurated and elected, 65 Chinese companies attempted to trademark the name Ivanka Trump for various things. (laughs) It was her responsibility. It was her responsibility to go defend, to claim those trademarks. So her name couldn't be used with no connection to her right. to sell things that, you know, and to, and especially she was going into her father's administration. So she paid out of her own pocket to do what are called defensive trademarks to stop Chinese companies from trying to sell Ivanka Trump branded things that she had no control over, no connection with. And so, and now they're using that as some sort of a, uh, you know, as a, as proof of impropriety when the exact opposite is actually true. Got to ask you about uh, the developments in the uh, impeachment gambit. Uh, Fiona Hill uh, testifying behind closed doors. Of course, of Ten cor- hours. Of, of course, behind closed doors. Uh, and, uh, of course, the big takeaways yesterday were the uh, assertions that uh, that former NSA John Bolton had uh, uh, had expressed concerns about Rudy Giuliani's involvement in Ukraine, Rudy Giuliani and Mick Mulvaney and whatever activities that they were uh, they were uh, mapping out as it pertains to Ukraine and Giuliani's dealings with Ukrainian officials. And uh, Fiona Hill was wrapped up into that. I mean, is there anything the coming out of uh, those behind closed doors inquiries at present that uh, concerns the administration from uh, particularly as it pertains to former administration officials? Well, and I, I, I'm not in the administration any longer. The campaign, I, work I should campaign, say. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Uh, but what we see right now is selective leaking uh, coming out from these secret proceedings where Republicans are not even allowed to participate equally. And and it's just another continuation of this narrative that, uh, that Schiff is trying to do, to basically do this in private, do this in secret. Um, it's absolutely appropriate for the administration to be looking into potential uh, acts of that were potentially unethical uh, of the former administration. We also know that it is very well documented. It was written in Politico in January of 2017 that the Ukraine meddled in the 2016 election. That was written by a reporter who now works for the New York Times. Mm -hmm. So this is not some fringe uh, conspiracy theory. It's been documented, and I think it's absolutely appropriate. While the mainstream media Loves to, every time the president talks to Russia, did you talk about meddling? Did you talk about meddling? And the one time he talks to another country that also meddled, now they want to impeach him for it. Yeah, it also, I mean, they're still sort of uh, trying to skate around this uh, other problem they have, which is the Ukrainian officials aren't going along with the D.C. press corps narrative, uh, number one, with respect to the quote-unquote debunked uh, uh, assertion that uh, Joe and Hunter Biden had done anything improper, unethical, potentially illegal. We just went through that. And then secondly, that they felt pressured, right? Zelensky didn't even know that aid was being withheld. So how could there be a quid pro quo? Now Adam Schiff says there doesn't need to be a quid pro quo. And you have U.S. officials reportedly saying they were worried about the pressure that was putting on being put on Ukraine, but Ukraine wasn't feeling any pressure. So how do you square that? You know, it, it just dumbfounds you because, you know, they're now trying to impeach him over a quid pro quo where there wasn't one. They're trying to accuse him of hiding transcripts and, and covering things up that he class, declassified and released. I mean, that's like the worst game of hide and seek ever. Uh, and yet it, it just shows you that the, that the Democrats and the mainstream media are consumed with this nonstop drive toward impeachment. They've wanted to do it since he was elected. And every day they wake up thinking, today's the day we've got him. And yet it all continues just to blow up right in their face. Do you think uh, Ted Cruz uh, had a good point when he suggested that uh, the transcripts of Joe Biden's calls with the Ukrainians and the Chinese uh, be released if we're going to, you know, uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander 
a type play. Well, I understand. I understand why he would think that, but I, I got to tell you, and I've worked for uh, elected officials in, in the executive branch. I've worked for mayors, governors, and the president of the United States. And if we get to this point, and I don't care about the party, if we get to the point where none of those elected officials can have honest conversations, uh, you know, with in this case, you know, foreign governments or other foreign leaders, or even among their own staffs without having it released, without having any area of disagreement put on public display, then we are going to hamper all of our elected officials' abilities to do their jobs, whether they're mayors, governors, or or presidents. That's not good for us as a country, and we've got to just stop it now because we need our leaders to be able to get on the phone or get into a room with their staff members and hear both sides of an argument or have very difficult conversations with with company heads or with foreign leaders or, or, or what might have you without it all being outed because these are very difficult things and we've got to trust that our people are doing the right thing. And if we take that ability from them, uh, then we are going to be worse off as a country for it. We're pleased to be uh, joined by uh, Mark Loder, who is the director of strategic communications for president Trump's 2020 reelection campaign, former special assistant to uh, the president and press secretary to VP Pence. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one. Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. If you maintain an industrial plant, you know your dust collection systems are a vital part of the operation of your plant. Without them, (laughs) things can get dusty quick. And when your dust collection system malfunctions, the downtime can cost your plant money. Time to call the professionals at Vans Industrial for help. Hi, I'm Dave Van Camp, owner of Vans Industrial. At Vans, we work with many different 